we invited a lot of people from America whom we consider being experts. But in fact, today, uh, about 250 people who are here in the room are experts. And we had a dream, and the dream was organize a day like this. And it couldn't be possible, I'm going to do it the American way, uh, without the sponsors here. And we really want to thank you for coming here today, taking the opportunity to listen to real stories. I spent my life walking into walls until I was in my mid-40s. I had earned three separate psychiatric diagnoses by then. I was always told I was a day late, a dollar short, almost pregnant. I mean, I never got anything altogether right. My anxiety got in the way, my fear got in the way, that made me frustrated, it made me angry. I'd act out, I'd get thrown out of places, I'd lose jobs. But I was very bright, and I was very skilled in computers, in technology, but I couldn't get along with people, and I couldn't get along with myself. I was a good little worker in the corporate machine. I crashed and burned. I thought my life was over. And then I found this recovery stuff, and believing, and, and challenging, and taking myself on and I did a damn good job of it and now I'm sharing it with others it doesn't get better than that as je doorheen gaat dan dan zie je de verhaal je zie jezelf in die persoon ja ik ben natuurlijk zelf ook uh, psychiatrisch uh, patiënt geweest zeg maar en ik heb jarenlang niet met een ervaringsdeskundige gesproken en op een gegeven moment uh, wel Matthijs dus. En uh, het, 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 ja, in combinatie met de reguliere hulpverlening was dat voor mij heel waardevol. Het is nog iemand die uh, in die zin heel goed begrijpt waar je geweest bent. When I was labeled with a psychiatric disorder as the reason and cause for my self-destructive behavior and the extended periods of major depression that I experienced, I was just totally devastated. I imagine that having this label now would mean that for the rest of my life, my behavior would be totally unpredictable. I used to be at a certain place in my life. I used to feel a certain way about myself. And now I feel differently. Now I feel like I'm just a regular guy. But I always know my history. What we try to bring is that just like in the medical system, the patient does have something to say to the doctor, as well as listening and receiving the knowledge that the doctor has, that they have to work together. What ultimately I would like to see happen is that the peers, the client base, become integrated into the service model. So there'll be someone that a patient could speak to who they know understands what they've gone through because they've had the same experience. The trust factor will be different and the outcomes will be better. I really encourage you to think, how am I going to encourage other young people to really find their place in the world, find their voice, where we just talk with youth on the fundamental basis, like what's helping you and what's not helping you? And that got people talking, you know. What's, what's helping is being able to take a walk, access to music. Things that we often are prevented from having when in institutional settings. Some of us struggle more than others. Some of us need a hand to hold. Some of us need a hug. Some of us need somebody to believe in us. Most people don't want you to provide a solution to them. They, they want you to listen while they talk it out and figure it out themselves. They want somebody to be there to walk along with them. We created something called a business incubator. A business incubator is something that helps individuals take their passion, turn their passion into something value, and take it to the market and trade. We've created 26 different businesses. And let me tell you a couple of them. There's a fellow that was hospitalized and 
was in the hospital for about three months, and he was feeling really low about himself, and a lot of energy had, had been usurped from his life, things had happened in his life that he found himself in the hospital. While he was in the hospital, he thought, well, you know, one of the things is that my health just doesn't seem good, and I don't have any energy. I'm just not eating right. So when he got out, he went and he purchased all the health bar and energy bars you could, you could purchase. He had like a dozen of them, and he ate them all, and he got sick. It was chocolate and sugar. That's what they were all made out of, and he hated them all. So he decided that he was going to go to the local library, and he did his own research, and he found ingredients that he could put into a granola bar that would produce energy, give you uh, vitamins, minerals that are all good for you. And he created something called Granola Bar None. From an idea he got in the hospital, he now has contracts with local grocery stores selling his bar, Granola Bar None. He did, he did the labeling, he did the, the uh, marketing of it, and now he's making money selling his Granola Bar, which I think is pretty cool. Wat we vandaag weer gehoord hebben is weer de inspiratie, weer de kracht van de mensen om er weer bovenop te komen. Dingen die je al weet, maar waarvan het toch goed is dat je ze weer even hoort. We hadden het er net over. Want vroeger werden mensen afgeschreven en nu is het gewoon weer, ja, je gaat gewoon verder. Ja. Voor mij is het meer een bevestiging dat het, dat het werkt. En daar, daardoor um, haal ik kracht uit om het op mijn werk in te zetten. Je hebt een levensloop achter je gelaten, dan ben je uitgestapt. En... Dan moet je wel over kunnen praten, maar dan moet het ook weer kunnen sluiten. En dan moet er niet meer tegen je aangekeken worden. Ik denk ook dat we op een kantelpunt zijn van grote veranderingen in de GGZ ook. Dat ook onder invloed van de recessie, overal worden mensen de laan uitgestuurd. Het moet goedkoper, het moet beter. En wie kan het goedkoper en beter doen dan mensen die lived experiences hebben. Die, die heel goed in staat zijn om uh, hetzelfde werk te doen als wat wij doen met professionals. En zij doen het met ervaringsdeskundigen. Deze hele week gaan ze, hè, er zijn 30 masterclasses uh, door het hele land. Dus ze gaan allerlei mensen ontmoeten. En daar ontstaan mooie dingen van. Hè. De mensen gaan samenwerken, ze gaan uh, kennis uitwisselen, vriendschap. Uh, je ziet nu ook al onder de Amerikanen. Die kennen elkaar wel, maar ze zien elkaar nooit. Dus die groep die je vanochtend op het podium zag staan, die zes mensen, die zeiden in de pauze al, we gaan een groep vormen. This is magic, weet je? Dit moeten we blijven doen. The very premise of what I'm presenting is, is that life is an illusion in the terms of that it's mostly a projection. And if we're looking at our audience or our clients in that they're in need or that they're broken, there's certain things that we're going to bring to that conversation that are going to render us less effective. If we hold our audience in contempt, these are a bunch of just a bunch of angry, uh, medicated, malcontent, uneducated, what have you. My presentation is going to go very differently than if I am engaged with people who I'm amazed at their ability to have not blown their brains out multiple times. Whatever the treatment would be would come from the client. It would be client directed. It would begin with the professional being becoming very asking permission to become clear what does the client want because so often when we create treatment plans there it's our plan that we're imposing on another human being instead of just simply interacting with another human being and saying how may i be of service to you wat ik ook bij mezelf dacht de manier hoe jij kijkt naar jezelf en de manier waarop ik kijk naar de ander bepaalt ook heel veel. Dus als een cliënt zichzelf definieert of, of ervaart als cliënt, zal die inderdaad ook zo naar de wereld kijken. Er was nog een mooi punt wat hij zei, vond ik, dat je de dingen doet en zegt zoals je de wereld zelf ziet. Dat het altijd klopt met hoe jij de wereld ziet. Ja. En um, dus het, het, iemand doet niet gek, maar iemand doet eigenlijk iets heel logisch, namelijk passend, passend bij hoe die de wereld ziet. Wat hij mij overbrengt is, het gaat om jou. 10% van is hulpverlening en de rest is wie je zelf bent en wat je inbrengt en hoe je het overbrengt en dat er een klik is. Ik denk de manier waarop ik werk, ik sta niet in de behandeling, het is meer in de ontmoeting. Ik werk dus met mijn eigen ervaringen en dat wil zeggen, ik heb zelf een geschiedenis, met justitie loopt dus rode draad in mijn leven en op 30 jaar geleefd ben ik pas mijn leven gaan veranderen. En dat heeft 15 jaar geduurd voordat ik ook echt op een rit had staan.
I want to get people hip to the peer model. I want to get hip to that relating from heart to heart, human being to human being is what is an effective way, not in my, my wisdom that I'm going to impart on you. And what really happens, being straight about it, in the overwhelming majority of treatment is it's about correcting. It's about like if you were really serious about your recovery with your brain chemistry issues, you would just you would take your medication like it's prescribed, and you would stop doing drugs if you really cared about your life. And and again, these are these are hierarchies, and and they're really rather primitive. They don't work. They're not effective. Momentarily, they might feel good to the person that's got their 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 weapon out or their finger out, but but in the end, we, we're we're doing a disservice to our clients. Okay, hello everybody. About two months ago, I was invited by Ellen and Laura to think about this new plan called Dynamo, which is going to be part of the new social pension. It's going to be a community-based run product, run by clients. I am a ervaringsdeskundige. I have zelf a year ago a diagnosis of schizophrenia. gekregen. That has mij a aantal jaren gekost om daar. Uh, mee om te gaan en toen ben ik tot de conclusie gekomen dat ik van huis uit ben ik sociaal pedagogisch hulpverlener dat ik daar ook iets mee moest. Wat heel belangrijk is en dat vind ik ook belangrijk bij dit project is dat mensen plezier in het leven krijgen. Ik ben weer gaan schrijven, ik ben weer muziek gaan maken op een gegeven moment en toen merkte ik opeens van hé, hey, dat gaat weer goed. Misschien kunnen er ook wel andere dingen. I believe that we're all people, we all want the same things in life. Even though we speak different languages, we have different customs or cultures, I think we're more alike than different. I believe people are, they just want to live a good life and have a friend and a buddy and somebody to hang out with and to share the story with. Yeah. And it, peers have taught me that recovery is possible and that people can recapture dreams, reclaim their lives and move forward and, and, and live lives that are full of meaning and, and happiness and that's what I have learned from peers. When I grew up in my family I have nine siblings, brothers and sisters, a big family. Most of the families in my community were pretty large. I grew up in the city, inner city, so people didn't have a lot of money to buy things. I grew up with child abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. I think, I believe everyone has a story to tell and it's good to have a friend along the way to tell your story too. And I believe uh, professionals can help us by really stepping back, letting us sometimes fall, but we can always learn something if we fall. Sometimes, I think they, professionals want to protect us because they feel the world's so big and it might gobble, gobble us up, but if we, don't, if we never fall, we'll never learn anything. We'll never be able to fly. Een week lang is er op allerlei manieren heel intensief gewerkt rond het thema samen met ervaringswerkers. Dat is de enige manier en dat is de beste manier. En deze week heeft het ook bijgedragen dat die boodschap luid alle kanten op gegaan is. Een heleboel mensen ook al te plekken daarvan overtuigd zijn geraakt. Die kant moeten we op, dat moeten we gaan doen. Ik verwacht dat uh, organisaties nog meer zullen gaan, uh, ja, dat in een visie verscherpen. Dat ze het uh, nog meer vragen gaan krijgen van hoe kunnen we dat doen met ervaringsdeskundigen, ervaringswerkers. Wat moet je, hoe kunnen we daar allemaal op verschillende manieren aan werken. Dus ja, dat was toch al wel de richting waarin we zitten hoor. Dus in die zin is het hier niet begonnen met deze week. Maar deze week geeft wel een enorme boost aan, denk ik. What I learned is that the struggle is indeed universal. There's no difference. We are all in it together. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose to be born a man. It's, it's, we're all in it together. And, and to be able to work with people from another culture, another country, and have people understand the ideas, to me is marvelous. Vanuit mijn perceptie zou ik zeggen dat organisaties veel meer cliëntgeoriënteerder zouden kunnen gaan werken. Veel meer cliënten, ervaringsdeskundigen binnen hun organisatie zouden kunnen opnemen. Dan niet alleen als vrijwilliger, maar betaald. En ook op posities. 
Uh, waarvan cliënten misschien hadden gedroomd dat ze daar nooit meer zouden komen. Dus bestuurlijke functies, directie, management. Uh, en zorgen dat mensen invloed krijgen. Uh, zodanig dat we uh, eens gaan ophouden met in etiketten te denken, maar over mensen te spreken die talenten hebben. In plaats van mensen met allerlei stoornissen, dat is de makkelijkste weg. Uh, de moeilijkste weg is om uh, als, uh, als professional op je handen te gaan zitten en de regie bij cliënten te laten.